small, I would say. Kind of small, you know, the places where we played. Yeah. Big band came through, like Dead Kennedys or something. Yeah, there'd be a thousand people there. But shows we were playing, we would play like all the time, opening for every band that came through, which was pretty nice for us. But uh, yeah, smaller shows, you know, 200 yeah. people, five, two to 500 people probably. Jerry Falwell and the Vibrating Crosses was one of them. I can't, you just like brought it all back. I can't remember the names of them all, but there was a lot of them that were. Really Red, before maybe? Before I started, they were the ones that were opening every show and everything. Really Red, I think, was an early really band. Was, yeah, they were an uh, established one. Legionnaires. A lot of bands would uh, come. I miss Legionnaires' disease, I think. They, they I think they broke up before I oh, okay. got into the scene, but uh, a lot of bands would come, like the Big Boys and. Uh, Bands like that from Austin, San Antonio, shit like that would come down and play. During the day, I remember I went went, went out away from my house to this uh, huh. kind of woods area. We used to have like pockets of woods everywhere around in the, our neighborhood. Now they've all been made into houses and everything. So yeah. Went there and smoked a joint, just kind of meditated for a while, thinking like, tonight my whole my entire life is going to change. One way or another, I knew that. Wow. I didn't know how it was going to change, but I was well aware that something was going to change. You know? That early on, huh? Well, it's your first show, you know. Yeah, like, well, yeah. I'm like, I didn't think like we're going to be big. <laughs> I just knew that something was going to change. Yeah. And I remember just thinking about that for a long time. Like, I, it could fail. It could be fizzle out and be bad, or it could be, go places. I never thought we'd be doing as well as we did. Wow. Originally, we just hoped to play a show, you know, and then after you play yeah. a show, then you want to play a show out of town somewhere. Yeah. That's your next goal. I want to play, like, in Dallas or something, you know, and then <laughs> yeah, we did that, yeah. and then it, just, it just snowballed from there. So what was the first out-of-town show for DRI? Well, we played, I don't know if you could call it, Kay Katie was not really out of town for us. Yeah. We played Katie. Oh, wow. Some free show, but Dallas was the original, really, first show. Uh, for a certain amount of money, you got a certain amount of hours. Yeah. And it was a small studio, and they were offering a special. So we went in, and we, you know, we rehearsed like a motherfucker. So we were like, yeah. we had our shit down. We weren't going to be spending a lot of time doing it. You know, but yeah. One of the first things I remember is like the first song we did, and then going into the, in uh, from the where you're recording, you go into the deal where they're actually, you know, where they I don't even know what they call it, but where the where the engineer is. Yeah, yeah, like and the, they the play it, yeah. yeah, and they play it through the really good speakers, and just hearing how good we sounded on that first album, like for us, because we'd heard our like we, we recorded through boom boxes and stuff. So we knew what we sounded like, but we didn't know how good it could sound. Right. It didn't even sound that great, but for us, it was like the best that we'd heard it. Yeah. We separated and everything. You know? Yeah. So I remember that very well. That fucking rule. Now. Just knocking it out quickly, and then we had too much to, too much uh, music to put on a seven inch. But the guy that owned the studio said he knew somebody, and he thought uh, from a pressing plant, and he's pretty sure that we'd be able to to pack it all on there. Yeah. Even though it was too much, yeah. and he was able to do it. So we able, got 22 songs on a 7-inch record, which was probably a record at that time, you know. There's no way. We thought it was hilarious because once we got the record, we went. We, none of us had a good stereo at home. Uh, yeah. Uh, with the record player. Yeah. So our bass player knew some rich people that had an apartment, and they had a really good sound system. So we all went over there, and we put it on. And we were all laughing our asses off because it just sounded like some kind of uh, grinding noise. And this was before grindcore yeah. or really like industrial or anything. And so it seemed like we'd started it kind of. And yeah. even nowadays, they, they say my brother started the blast beat. He was the first one. I hear people say that a lot. Uh, so we influenced a lot of bands with that kind of just grinding noise. It would just stop, grind along and then stop and then we'd start over again yes. and grind along and stop and... It was just like we were laughing our asses off because at ourselves. We were laughing at yeah. ourselves yeah. for what it sounded like. But we thought it was yeah, pretty funny good. and Thank it you. was pretty good too. So we were yeah, we were happy with it. Yeah. My about brother, he lives in Ohio. In Ohio, okay. Does he still do anything musically? Yeah, he got he does a lot of uh what they call it? open mic nights and shit. He'll go in and play drums. Really? 
with uh, blues bands and stuff like that. Yeah, he does jazz, whatever. He just goes in there, and jams with people, and doesn't have to tour and whatever the stuff that you know. with Kevin Bacos was he he uh we didn't have shirts when we first started but he we, we, we did some show and he brought some shirts he gave like one to each of us he printed them without asking it was it was when we were called us DRI we weren't yeah. we weren't DRI yet we were us us dirty rotten noses. so he he just brought them and he gave them to us and we're like oh cool they're on white shirts you know I do his voice your opinion maybe it was a design and then he said, if you need more, let me know. Like, here's my phone number or whatever. So then, of course, we wanted to get more. And then for a while, he was making our shirts, even on tour. We would, He was shipping us shirts and everything. And uh, awesome. they were really amazing shirts. Some of them were all hand spray painted. With, like, I don't know how they were doing it. But they were amazing shirts like that nobody does anymore. And then, and all the shirts were, um, he would buy seconds. So they weren't, they weren't like expensive t-shirts with blanks yeah. he would go to like the white elephant sale or whatever they call it they were they were messed up a little bit you know stitching was off or whatever so he'd get them for cheaper nobody could hardly tell <laughs> and then eventually he just said i can't do it anymore he said y'all have outgrown me he's like uh I, i've got a regular job and i i literally just can't do this <laughs> so then we had to find a real merch company and we it was uh, we we invited a bunch of fans there, and then we did it live, you know. So it wasn't a real show, but the fans were all there. And we said, okay, we're gonna play the same song over and over, and you just stage dive and have a good time. <laughs> so that was fun. The other ones weren't really that fun. I can understand why. I don't know, like acting probably isn't very fun compared to being in a band because yeah. you're uh, just waiting around most of the time. Yeah. And then they all of a sudden, okay, we're ready for you. And then you have to go up there and perform. And it's just kind of lame. Yeah. I know some actors have their own band because it's probably way more fun to yeah. have that interaction while you're doing your yeah. thing rather than being an actor and it's just a cameraman and, uh, you know, people like that. And yeah. You don't really have that uh, interaction with the crowd. Yeah. A lot of, there's one with the, the skateboarding and there's another one where I think he's... Uh, like in a wheelchair or something, or with a crutch. <laughs> Adam. There's another one. Um, Adam. What's that band? Uh, they made one that they changed it a little bit. Lich, Lich King. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Crossover yeah. one, but they changed it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah.